welcome to the live broadcast let us know where you are watching us my name is susan yeah yeah thank you thank you let us know where you're joining us god bless you god bless you continue joining continue joining in the name of jesus continue joining in the name of jesus Makantesko taraba do shkereba hante reba gazika taraba do ragantesko taraba do makantesko taraba gazika do robusha taraba do skatai rima kantesko taraba do in the name of Jesus Amen 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 Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue sharing. Thank you for the likes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. I, if you can amen. hear me, say amen. Amen. Oh, I hear you. Hallelujah. Love you. Love you. We're live again. Michael and Susan, Atkins Ministry. Uh, we'll go ahead and tell you today that we'll be reading, uh, starting in Judges chapter 13 when we get started, give you time to find it in your Bibles, Judges chapter 13. We might read some of 14, 15, we'll see. Uh, so we're glad to be with you today. God, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, please bless everyone that's listening. Save the lost God, heal their God. Encourage people, Lord, strengthen people in Jesus' name. Please anoint us, Lord, me and Susan, as we teach, preach your word. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome everyone to the broadcast. If you'd like to reach myself or Susan, gentlemen, you can uh, email me at mikeadkins355 at gmail.com. Mikeadkins355 at gmail.com. And ladies, you can contact Susan at Warrior Prayer. 413 at gmail.com. Hey, Susan. Yeah, we're doing that because that's our engagement rings. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love you. We love everyone. Welcome to the broadcast. And uh, again, emails, Mike Atkins, 355 at gmail.com. Warrior Prayer 413 at gmail.com. Please pray for us. Uh, the Lord give us wisdom and knowledge and lead us in regards to the comforters where we help widows, uh, widow, you know, elderly women over the age of 60 with no husband, no family, no one to take care of them. We call it the organization of comforters. And we need your prayers. If you feel, feel led to help in any way, uh, you can uh, let us know by emailing us. Email Susan. Would be a good idea, probably, or myself, mostly because uh, I'm in the United States at the moment. Susan's in Nairobi, in uh, in Kenya, and uh, when we organize these events to help the widows, uh, Susan's taking care of that at the moment until I arrive. Usually, we give out blankets, we've gave out soap. Um, she can tell you more about it. Other items you can donate, pray for us, if. By any chance, you feel led to help financially, you're more than welcome. We need all the help that we can get, uh, and we'll be transparent about what we do. And just go to PayPal and enter in MikeAdkins355 at gmail.com. And uh, Susan's also creating a website for the comforters and uploading content to that, which we'll share when she's got it. Uh, completely ready. Yeah, and also a YouTube yeah. channel, Comforters International, I believe, which we can share to uh, Afghan's ministry. Also, we're on radio in the United States in the city of Hazard, Kentucky, on a radio station called WSGS 101.1 FM. 
Sundays in the United States, Eastern Time at 10.30 to 11 a.m. East African Time would be 5.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. How do you listen? You listen online. A variety of ways, but I suggest uh, go to an app called TuneIn.com. In the search field, enter in the name of the radio station at that time that it's supposed to come on. For instance, if you're in Kenya, it would be 5.30 p.m. on Sundays. Go to that app, uh, TuneIn.com, enter in WSGS 101.1 FM, and click play, and you'll hear the broadcast. 5.30 p.m. East African time, United States, uh, 10.30 a.m. on Sundays. If, you, if you're somewhere else, just look at the United States uh, Eastern time zone and Google it or whatever and figure out what the time difference is between the United States and your country. And you'll know time. Oh, that's a good idea. Share, share, share. Please share the broadcast to your friends, groups. Uh, share on your Facebook. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Continue to share, 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 share. In the name of Jesus. God do you great. God do you marvelous. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I just want to make sure. Go ahead. I'll let Susan take yes. over while I share to these groups. Let us know where you are watching us from. My name is Susan. Mike and I, we are so delighted this hour. We are coming live from Cornerstone. Uh, uh, Cornerstone Pentecostal Cornerstone Pentecostal Evangelistic Ministries. Yeah, we are coming live all Cornerstone the way from Your Program. <laughs> Acting Studio. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Somebody is asking the location of Adkins Studio. Oh we boy, I'm in, I'm in the United States, in the state of Kentucky. Susan's in Nairobi, Kenya, but I'm coming to Nairobi. We are, uh, we are uh, engaged, so I'll be coming. So our location will end up being in Kenya, in Nairobi. At the current time, like I said, I'm in America, in the United States. Susan's in Nairobi, and we're merging everything together. Susan had a television program before called Prayer Warrior Program. And uh, I called my ministry Cornerstone. So the radio program we call in Hazard, Kentucky, the Cornerstone Prayer Warrior Program, which is a combination of the two. So we're trying to equally join everything together. What Susan done before, what I'm, what I've been doing, and and blend it all together, create one ministry as we prepare for our life and marriage together. The Bible says one can put a thousand into flights and two can put ten thousand in a flight. And I, I thank God for this combination. It's a combination that is uh, wonderful, glorious. And we thank God. I say hallelujah to that. Thank you very much again. My name is really me to be Susan. I'm born again. I want to pose a question. Are you born again? Have you received Christ and your, as your personal savior? Jesus is coming soon. So you, if you've not given your life to Christ Jesus, take, a, take a this chance and just say, Lord Jesus, come to my heart. This day I accept you. Erase my name from the book of the wicked and write my name in the book of life. From now, I will follow your instruction and I will be obedient to your word. Holy Spirit, I ask of you, fill me a flesh and abide in me as I abide in you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. If you have amen. said that prayer, congratulations. Welcome to the kingdom of heaven. Welcome to Christianity. This is where divinity meets humanity. This is where you hear all about the word of God. You hear about Jesus died, Jesus resurrected. You hear about hope. You hear about uh, uh, resurrection. You hear about Holy Spirit. 
you hear about power of the Holy Spirit, you hear about a lot of good things. Because he says that, uh, now I'm saying what he says. You ask him who? Our God in heaven. He says, not by power, neither by mighty, but by thy spirit. And he says in the book, that for his sake he became poor, so that we may become rich. Rich in which ways? Rich in the word of God. Rich in the eternity. Rich in everything. Rich in glory. Rich in material wealth. Rich. Glory to God. So, uh, about the comforters, I want to touch a little bit about it. Uh, comforters, we, uh, we offer blankets. We offer some, uh, it, uh, blanket is a common denominator. We make these people feel comforted. And we issue to the widows, praise the name of the Lord. Loka, zika, tarabos, katera, handoska. Masheke, ribas, ko, tarabados, katae. Riga, desko, tarabado, sha, tarabado. That says the Spirit of God. But if you receive Jesus, as your personal savior, he shall walk you through this journey. It's not a journey I will promise is easy, but let me tell you, it is the most enjoyable and sweet way. There's no place you can find peace apart from here. So once again, I was talking about the comforter. The comforter will comfort the widows. We give the blankets, as I said, it's a common denominator. And uh, it depends on the area. Some areas will tell us maybe they need flour. If they are hungry, we find the necessity is the flour or something they can eat. Other areas you find that, uh, yes, maybe the, something they need is a soap. They need uh, uh, something to, to apply on their skin. You know, in Africa, our skins most of the times are dry, so we, we apply oil. We call it jerry. So we kind of give them a lotion. Let me call it a lotion to uh, nourish the skin. Then after that, is we also give oil, 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 oil in the name of Jesus. Something is happening. I don't know what is happening. The devil What's is wrong? A liar. The devil is a liar. What is wrong? So. I was seeing as if I was, we were losing connection. Oh, I can see. Okay. Yeah, you're okay. I see you. I hear you. Okay. So it's like, it's like your picture slowed down a little bit, like you're in slow motion, but everything's okay. Other than that, it's okay. Yeah, now it's okay. I could tell there's something that was not okay, but now I can tell you it's okay. The devil, you are lying. I arrest you and I capture you. I bring you back to the word of God. Wherever you are, let me tell you. Anything you are using, I disconnect you, I dismantle you. And now I call you to the kingdom of heaven. Stop stop serving evil. Serve Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. So, the comforters, they, we give according to what we feel, the necessity of the area. Some place you go, they will tell you we need oil, we need, maybe they have the flour. Others you go, they extremely poor. You order what, which, what, what will I give? Will I, you know, sometimes you just, uh, you are there, you are waiting, and by the help of the Holy Spirit, you buy what you buy, and according to the kind of money you have, and you give them. So I, I'm so grateful so far. God has been gracious and through giving, reaching out to the widows. It's a biblical command, remember. And this is one of the things. Remember the widow in the book of, uh, is it the book of Luke, honey? That says that uh, when he, she died, it might be the name of the widow that died. They cried because she was making garments for book them. Of and she became back to life. The book because of, of that, the widow was remembering other people. So, it's such an honor. It's such an honor to be a blessing to others. The other day, uh, I will echo the, the words of our deputy president of this nation, nation of Kenya, that he said, if you have an extra seat, if you have an extra bed in your house, go to the children home. Pick those children. Let those seats be occupied. Let that bed be, be occupied. 
And by so doing, we shall be able to remove the burdens out of our children's home. So if you have three sitters, they have nobody, please go and pick somebody. If you have extra money that you will need to reach out to others, don't hesitate. Let's reach out to these people. And God's going to do us good. I see that uh, God gave me the burden of the widows. I don't know the reason. Michael had the same burden, and God knew why he brought us together. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I worship you and I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Michael. Yes, and uh, if you'll let you, uh, we know the Lord wants us to win souls above all else. Besides that, the Lord, uh, part of the gospel, uh, the main part is winning souls. And other than that, we want to see people healed and encouraged and delivered and set free and devils cast out and, and all of these things and miracles, signs and wonders. But we also want to remember the poor the widows, even at certain times, uh, uh, we help the orphans and the homeless people, the street people. Uh, the comforters is mostly focused on the widows. And we ask you to do that of a willing heart because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. We're not trying to manipulate you into giving to the comforters or force fit, forcing you to do it, but we're telling you, you can. If you want to help, promote the best, one of the best things you can do is pray for us, the Lord to give us wisdom and guidance and the resources we need and show us where to go and who to help and at what time. You can also uh, contact Susan at warriorprayer413 at gmail.com. And if you want to donate uh, items such as blank blankets or soap or whatever it may be or flour, you, she can tell you how to get it to her. If you're in the Nairobi area or nearby, or if you want to help of your own free will, if the Lord touches your heart to do so willingly, you can go to PayPal and enter in mikeadkins355 at gmail.com. If you want to donate between uh, 5 and $10, that would help uh, mm, buy a blanket and some flour, uh, a good size bag of flour right for a widow for in, that's just an example of what you could do with ten dollars if you want to donate five or five six seven eight nine ten dollars it'd be a great help to the work of god i say uh we're asking you do it to do it willingly and not trying to uh manipulate you into doing it because that's our message today manipulation you know uh yeah. Manipulation is when you're trying to um, persuade someone against, I would guess I would say against their will to do something that you want them to do, which is beneficial to you, not necessarily to them and without them knowing about it. In other words, you're doing it, you're trying to persuade someone or get someone to do something for your own selfish reasons, uh, because you want to use that person, control that person, uh, influence that person. Manipulation is when you're trying to influence someone for your own selfish purposes with or without their knowledge, usually without, unless the Lord gives them discernment. For instance, mm, you know, uh, let me think of an example. Um, uh, let me think of a good example that I could use without being too specific. Unless Susan thinks of one first. Um, you know, I could say the wife, but let's be let's be fair and let's use the husband. Let's say me and Susan's married, and I tell Susan, Susan, uh, I want Susan to do something, and I tell Susan, uh, if you don't do this, mm, I'm not coming to bed tonight. I'm going to sleep on the sofa if I don't get my way. 
you know, I'm, uh, it's kind of like blackmail, blackmail, manipulation, coercion, uh, all along the same lines. You know, it's kind of like uh, the book of Galatians that lists witchcraft as one of the works of the flesh. And that's what witchcraft does. Witchcraft tries to influence somebody through the powers of darkness, you know, through prayers or spells or what curses or whatever they may use for their own selfish reasons to get what they want and usually against that person's will. So we would say that manipulation, blackmail, coercion, all falls underneath the spirit of witchcraft, which is one of the works of the flesh. And he says that Paul said that those that do such things would not inherit the kingdom of God. So God gives us a free will, even when it comes to salvation. He says, let all them that, uh, uh, he says, come and take of the water of life freely. You know, Jesus says, come unto me. He doesn't make you come to him, but he invites you to come. Free will. He doesn't manipulate you into coming. He doesn't force you to come. God never forces people to do anything. But God gives us a free will, whether we're going to serve him or serve Satan, whether we're going to heaven or hell, whether we're going to serve God and Jesus Christ or not. He gives you a free will, whether you give in the morning, on a Sunday morning, whether you get up on Sunday morning or, or whenever it is and go to church. You got, you got a free will when you get up or before you go to bed every day. When you wake up in the morning, if you're going to read, if you're going to pray, everything you do, you've got a free will. Now, when when someone steps in and they try to find ways to manipulate, coerce, uh, force you, uh, blackmail you into doing things against your will, that's not of God. In fact, it's the spirit of witchcraft, the same spirit. In the Old Testament, God said, suffer not a witch to live. Now, a lady, uh, there's been women that have had bosses before, employers, and maybe it's a man, and he told the lady, now, if you want that, or if you want to keep this job, you need to do this and this. Uh, if you don't have a an intimate relationship with me, then I'm going to fire you. You're not going to get your pay raise. Or... You're not going to get that promotion. If you want to be promoted, do this or else. That's manipulation, blackmail, coercion uh, against that person's will, telling them if you want this to happen, you have to do this. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. So, you know, that's not of God. When the right way to get that promotion is, you know, to work hard and be faithful to that job and that employer and do your duties and do what you're supposed to do and, and earn it not by being, doing it uh some other way especially by manipulation so today uh susan do you have anything else to say at this point yeah manipulation is uh in one way or another can be very dangerous and there are consequences of manipulations so both the manipulator and the one being manipulated, all of them, they suffer. Why? Because when the manipulator manipulates the manipulator, the manipulator, the manipulator, I'm English. When the manipulator is not yes. careful, yes. you may end up losing even your. But when the manipulator discovers the truth, the manipulator will be also in danger. But also, in the kingdom of God, it's a sin. It is a sin. So, as you're going to be focusing on that area, just be careful. The story we are about to see from the book of Judges. Let's learn slowly by slowly by slowly in the name of Jesus. Michael. We're going to read from Judges today, but another example might be Jacob and Esau in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis. You know, how Esau was sort of 
I guess you would say, manipulated out of his birthright. And uh, so uh, if we touch on that or not, I don't know, but we're going to read the book of Judges first. But that's another example, and I'm sure we could think of more uh, when people in the Bible were manipulated. Who was it? He was talking about uh, Laban and Jacob. How he manipulated him into serving him so many years for Rachel, and then he ended up having to take Leah. He's manipulated to stay there and serve and serve and serve and serve, all in the book of Genesis. A lot of manipulation going on in the book of Genesis. Even in the beginning, I guess you could say that maybe Eve was manipulated by Satan, and he said, oh, uh, yeah, God said that uh, you're not supposed to eat of the tree tree of knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden, but you'll not surely God die. God knows that in the day you eat of it, you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. You know, he sort of manipulated her into making her think God was holding something good back from them, and it's not going to hurt you. You know, he kind of, uh, kind of a coercion, manipulation kind of going on there too. But there's, Today we're going to read from uh, Judges, the book of Judges. Sure, where to begin? Should I start in chapter 13? Susan? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're going to read uh, the background here about Samson. I'm sure you've heard of Samson. Well, we're going to tell you about Samson. Judges chapter 13, verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. Every time the children of Israel did evil, they went into captivity or bondage or servitude to heathen nations round about them, part of God's judgment. Verse 2 says, And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Thou therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Verse 6, Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told me he his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bury son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. Verse 9, And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and shewed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. Uh, and Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. Verse 12, And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee, until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. In other words, he wanted to cook him a meal. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, verse 16, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread, 
And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thou, when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? Verse 19, so Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it up on a rock unto the Lord, and the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar, and Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things. Nor would, uh, uh, has at this time have told us such things as these. Verse 24, And the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtel. Eshtel. Chapter 14. Do you want me to continue reading, reading or do you want to read? Continue reading. Okay. I'm sure she's getting ready. We're just laying a background here in case you're not familiar with the story of Samson like some people. But it's possible. Sometimes people have been in church for years and maybe they've not read some things, so you never know. Better safe than sorry. Chapter 14. And Samson went down to Timnath, which is a city of the Philistines, and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Remember, the Philistines are heathens. They don't serve the God of Israel, and Israel is in bondage to the Philistines. Samson shouldn't have even been down there among those women. So for chapter 14, verse 2, And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Verse 3, Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines. <clears throat> and Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Oh, his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord. Uh, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. Verse 5, Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vine vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hands, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. So he killed the lion with his bare hands. Verse 8, after a time he returned to take her. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. Talking about the carcass of the lion that he killed earlier. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating. And came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did eat. But he told them not them, that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast, for he used the young men to do so. To do, And it came to pass when they saw him that they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle. So he puts forth a riddle about the lion, the lion and the that he killed and its dead carcass, the bees had made a nest in there and made honey inside the carcass of the dead lion. 
but nobody knew about it but Samson. He said in verse 12, And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you, if you can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast. So the marriage feast was seven days long. And if you find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets, which are shirts, it says in the notes, and 30 changes of garments. But if you cannot declare it me, then shall you give me 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. Hello! How do you say that? M Macy or Macy? Atama? At Hello. Lord bless you. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. M-E-C-Y. Lord bless you. Welcome to the broadcast. We're talking about Judges chapter 13. We're in verse uh, chapter 14 right now, reading about the story of Samson and preparing to talk about the spirit of manipulation. Manipulation. Like coercion, manipulation, blackmail, all which are forms of witchcraft, we believe. So Samson says in verse 13, but if you cannot declare the riddle to me, then shall you give me 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. Isana Gwaya, I want a friend who wants to be my friend. Abid Zahir, great job, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Zabid. Abid, Abid, I'm sorry. Abid. Uh, Isana, Isana. Uh, we're your friends in Jesus' name, me and Susan. <laughs> we're your friends, and Jesus wants to be your friend also, if he's not already. Judges 13, Judges 14 right now. Uh, and he said, and, and they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle, that we may hear it. The Philistines said, and he said unto them, out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. And it came to pass, verse 15, Judges 14, verse 15, on the seventh day, which is the last day of the feast, the Philistines were running out of time. They hadn't figured out Samson's riddle. So they said unto Samson's wife, the Philistine lady that he married, Entice thy husband, that he may declare it unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee in my father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take uh, what we ha that we have? Is it not so? Now, first of all, which I never noticed before, the Philistines manipulate Samson's wife. She's one of them, but they manipulate her anyway. Because they said, go and entice your husband, Samson, and have him tell you what the riddle means. Because they didn't want to have to pay Samson. They wanted him to have to lose the bet and pay them. So they said, if you, if you don't go and entice Samson, we will burn you in your father's house with fire. Manipulation. If you don't do what we want, we're going to kill you and your father forcing her to do it against her will, which kind of tells you she didn't want to do it because why would they have to manipulate her and make her do it against her will if she was willing to? Verse 16, and Samson's wife wept before him. Now the real reason she's crying is she don't want her, she don't want to be burned up and see her father burned too. She knows where her people are, you know, the cruel, they're heathen people. They don't have no mercy. They don't serve the God of Israel. She knows they mean what they say. So she's afraid. Lucy George, hello, Lucy. Hello, Lucy. Welcome to the broadcast. Talking about the spirit of manipulation. Judges chapter uh, 13. And right now we're in chapter 14. We're talking about Samson. How his wife tried to manipulate him. To get him to tell about the riddle he put forth to the Philistines. Verse 16. Samson's wife wept for sore before he uh, wept before him and said, "Thou dost but hate me, and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and have not told it to me." And he said her unto her, "Behold, I've not told it to my father nor my mother, and shall I tell it to thee?" And she wept before him the seven days while the feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lay sore upon him, 
In other words, she cried and cried. Please tell me the riddle, the riddle, the riddle. And she told the riddle to the children of her people. So he finally gives in to her after she begs and cries and pleads and tells her what the meaning of the riddle is. And then she tells the Philistines. Verse 18, the men of the city said unto Samson the seventh day before the sun went down, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would have not found out my riddle. So he said, the reason you know the answer to the riddle is, is because you persuaded my wife to get the answer from me and tell you. Verse 19, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he went down to Ashkelon and slew or killed 30 men of them and took their spoil and gave change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled and he went up to his father's house. So he was, uh, in verse 20, but Samson's wife was given to his companion, his friend, whom he had, whom he had used as his friend. So the Philistines got Samson's wife to manipulate him, convince him to persuade him to tell the meaning of the riddle. And uh, Samson, uh, so they wouldn't have to pay Samson uh, the bet. And Samson owed them, of course, instead of Samson, uh, Samson knew that they uh, tricked him and used his wife against him, so he didn't give them what he had. Instead, he went down to Ashkelon and killed 30 of their own people and took their spool and their uh, and gave the change of garments which he owed them, owed to the Philistines. He killed 30 of them and, and paid the debt with uh, the garments and the spool that he'd taken from their own people instead of his own stuff. At the end of it, in verse 20, Samson's wife is given to his friend by her father because if you read on, you'll find out they thought uh, Samson hated her because uh, her father gave her to someone else because they figured uh, she deceived Samson and let herself be used against her husband and that Samson would be so angry and mad at her that he wouldn't want her no more. So her father gives her away. So the Philistines are enemies of Israel. Uh, Samson's married to one of them, one of their daughters, a Philistine. He puts forth this riddle to them. If 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 he if they can't guess the riddle, they gotta give him thirty sheets and thirty changes of garments. But if if they get the answer the riddle within the seven days of the marriage feast, then then uh, he has to give them thirty sheets and thirty changes of garments. So the Philistines come up with a plan to use his wife against him to entice Samson, so they can find out the meaning of the riddle, so they won't have to pay. So Samson's wife begins to manipulate and persuade Samson. She says in verse 16, you hate me. You don't love me. You put forth a riddle to my people and you've not even told it to me. And she cried and wept and said, you must not love me. You must hate me. You don't love me because you won't tell me the secret of the riddle. And she let herself be used as an instrument to manipulate her husband. So, uh, Susan, I'm going to let you uh, speak for a second here. Welcome, Patience. Welcome, Bonky. Thank Lucy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for them that are joining. We are talking about manipulation. Wives, two wives manipulate one husband. Yeah, and later on, about, if you go on and read, you'll read. He gets in another relationship by, with another woman where he's manipulated. So. Here it costs his uh actually actually letting her manipulating, he lost his wife. So go ahead, Susan. Yeah, the spirit of manipulation is real. Manipulation is real. Yes, it's real. You can say anything to manipulate somebody. You manipulate to get favor. And even to today, wives, Husbands, they are being manipulated also. Even the seagulls, they manipulate the seagulls. Praise the name of the Lord. Just because maybe you have been told we need this and this. So 
it's always nice and good to understand where you are coming from and where you are going. Samson, the wife is telling, if you don't love me, tell me this. What, what, what is this that, uh, uh, that is making the wife to tell Samson, tell me this? Manipulation. Manipulation. Thank you very much. We are continuing to talk about this topic. It's a wide topic. It's a large and wide topic about manipulation. So just relax and get to understand what it means to be manipulated. Michael. You know, uh, Samson's wife manipulated him into finding out what the meaning of the riddle was so she could help her people against her own husband. The Bible says that, uh, you know, uh, actually it started with Adam. Adam said, uh, when God gave him Eve, he said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they too, they twain, shall be one flesh. There should be no man allow the devil or anyone to use uh, himself against his wife, and no woman should allow anyone or the devil or anyone to use her against her husband, because when you get married, you're one flesh. Don't let anyone use you against each other. Actually, that's what Satan done in the beginning. He moved upon Eve because she's the Bible says the woman is the weaker vessel. And she uh, he used he didn't attack Adam directly. He attacked Adam through Eve. He talked to Adam. Satan never did talk to Adam. He talked to Eve and Eve gave it to her husband, Adam, and he ate. He manipulated Adam through Eve, just like he manipulated Samson through the Philistines manipulated uh, Samson to find out what they wanted to know through Samson's wife. God uses people in ministry in all, so many different ways, uses us to help each other and prophesy to each other, and words of wisdom and to pray for each other and to love each other and to be friends. Somebody said they needed a friend. Well, uh, and, but Satan also uses people. God uses people. Satan uses people. You, Satan uh, will manipulate you through other people. It may be your husband, your wife, your boss at work, your employer. It may be friendship is a simple story, Vonky says. Hallelujah. <laughs> friendship is a simple story. Uh, so, uh, there sometimes there may be a mm, a young lady out there, and maybe her fiance, her boyfriend may say, uh, he may try to manipulate her and say, if you don't become intimate with me, I'll leave you. I'll dump you. Manipulation, manipulating her. Uh, against her will to do something that she doesn't really want to do or think that's right uh, to get what he wants for his own advantage, his own selfish reasons. That's manipulation. And she thinks, well, if I don't do this, I'm going to lose. Oh, I love him so much. Uh, 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 yeah, you know, I want to wait, but I, I don't want to lose him. And, and maybe she gives in, maybe she doesn't, but he's trying to uh, the enemy is trying to manipulate her and uh, defile her through manipulation against her own will. Uh, puts her in, oh, uh, what a predicament. I mean, either, either you do it or I leave you. And she thinks, what choice do I have? Things like this has happened before. Uh, I know one pastor in America, in the state of Kentucky, <coughs> Brother Vernon, this lady told him, you know, um, she's going to his church and paying tithes and giving money in the offering. And uh, If you ever let that preacher come to your church and preach again, I don't like to hear him. I'll stop. I'll quit coming to church here and I'll quit supporting your church and I'll quit paying tithes here. So she's trying to manipulate that pastor into getting what she wanted. Church members even try to manipulate 
pastors, or it could go back, you know, I'm sure it could go the opposite direction. You know, if you don't stop, if you don't stop preaching on uh, this, uh, I'll quit coming to church here. I'll change churches. I'll quit giving money in the offering. You know, whatever. Just an example, because I've heard of this before. And uh, so that's manipulation. That 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 pastor knows that he's supposed to uh, uh, preach that message, but somebody's trying to manipulate him and telling him, uh, I don't want to hear that kind of message. Uh, I don't want to hear that anymore. I'll quit supporting the church if uh, you preach on that anymore. So he's been, even though he knows it's the will of God and he knows he's supposed to preach the truth of the word of God, they're trying to manipulate him, use something against him to get what they want, which is to stop him from preaching that message, whatever it may be. They're trying to use their money and their tithes uh, to manipul manipulate. If you don't do this, I'll do this. Or if you do do this, I'll do this, whatever. So you have anything to say right now, Susan? Uh, manipulation is very dangerous. I think that the book of Judges is quite in order. We've seen that woman in the book of Judges 13. The woman came and told her husband, saying, A man, got, no, it was uh, where the honey, about the honey. Yeah, that's over in. So manipulation is very dangerous, and it can lead to a lot of uh, tr uh, to trouble. So if you are lady and you didn't, you need a man, don't manipulate them. Just go ahead and tell I need you. If you're a man and you need a woman, go ahead and tell them I need you. Stop manipulating. If you need him to buy a car, tell him I need a car. Don't manipulate him. If you need a house, tell him I need a house. Stop manipulating. If you need to know the, where the part, but one of the things that I was ca catching my eyes was how the light of telling Samson. You know, I want to know your heart like I can uh, bite you. And Samson just went ahead and told uh, the wife, you know, that my power comes from the hair. I don't know how you, you can you can you can call it. If you want that marriage to start, let's stop manipulation. If you want that church to start, let's stop manipulation. If you want to have a good life, stop manipulation. You may manipulate today, but tomorrow who are you going to manipulate? Praise the name of the Lord. Michael. So she she was saying if you want a land if you want land or a house or a car don't manipulate your husband, you know, we assume it's the husband maybe who knows maybe it could be the wife in the United States because women have got some good jobs here but uh, you don't have to manipulate your husband into buying you a house or a car or a, a piece of land or clothes or whatever it is uh, and make him do it against his will and make him feel like he don't have no choice. Why don't you just, uh, you know, be kind and sweet and loving and be good and faithful to him. And uh, when he sees how wonderful and sweet and loving and kind you are, uh, oh, he'll love you so much. And he'll want to buy you a house. He'll want to buy you uh, land, a car, and, and clothes. And he'll want, you to, he'll want to do nice things for you. Don't make him, don't manipulate him into doing it. If you have to manipulate someone into doing something, uh, what good is it? They're doing it against their will. They're not doing it because... They care for you or they love you. Manipulation is a form of witchcraft. Just like a witch prays and tries to force people to, uh, to do things against their will, to get what they want against someone else's will. They have to use curses and spells. Manipulation is always against the other person's will. You have to manipulate them and, and uh, 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 you have to uh, persuade them uh, uh, against their will to Force them to do things against their will that they don't wouldn't otherwise do. What good is it? Now, chapter 15, it goes on and tells us uh, what Samson did in verse 1. It came to pass within a while after in the time of wheat harvest that Samson visited his wife with a kid. 
she'd left and went home to her father, by the way. And he said, I will go in to my wife into the chamber. But her father would not suffer him to go in, wouldn't allow him to go in. Her father said, I verily thought that thou hast utterly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. So the end result of this manipulation was he lost his wife. Her father thought Samson hated her so much, was so mad at her, he wouldn't want her no more because she was used against him. So he gave her away to his friend. Verse 3, Samson said concerning them, I will be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. So Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took firebrands and turned them tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between the two tails. And when he had set the, fire, uh, the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burn up both the shocks and also the standing corn with the vineyards and olives. Then the Philistines said, Who have done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. Now look at the result of, of, of being yielding, her yielding herself to being uh, used to entice and manipulate her husband. In the end, not only does she lose her husband, but her own people burn her and her father with fire. She loses her husband, uh, everything she's got, her father and her are burned alive. She ends up losing her life because she yielded to the spirit of manipulation. Verse seven, Samson said unto them, though you've done this, yet I will be avenged of you, and after that I will cease. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. So he took revenge. And he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock, Etham. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why are you come up against us? And they answered, Divine Samson are we come up to do to him as he hath done to us. Then 3,000 men of Judah went up to the top of rock, uh, the rock, Etham, and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines are rulers over us? And what is this that you've done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me. So I've done unto them. Verse 12, And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast, and deliver thee into their hand, but surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords, and brought him up from the rock. And when he had came up to Lehi, unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands were loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew or killed a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps of, upon heaps, with the, jawbone, uh, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men, with the jaw of a you know, a donkey, a mule. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramoth Lehi. And he was sore thirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. And now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? Verse 19, But God clave an hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore, he called the name thereof in Hakkor, which is in Lehi, unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. Now, uh, she yielded to her people, the Philistines, and loud, uh, enticed her husband, Samson. Uh, she was used to manipulate Samson and to get the answer to the riddle. Samson, uh, he ends up killing uh, chapter 15, verse 19. He killed 30 uh, men of them so he could take their spool and their garments and give to the Philistines. He caused 30 men to die. Uh, Samson loses his wife. She goes back home to her father. Uh, she's given to another man. Then the Philistines, uh, then Samson takes revenge on the Philistines for uh, upon her father, upon the Philistines for 
giving his wife away to another man, and he destroys all the crops. Then the Philistines take revenge and uh, kill Samson's uh, wife or ex-wife and her father. We don't know what happened to the other man she was married to. Doesn't say. Uh, think of all the damage that was done because people yielded to being to the spirit of manipulation. You got anything to say, uh, Susan? Wow. Yeah. Go do you. Manipulation. I don't have anything to add. Chapter 16, verse 1. So we'll start on Delilah. Now remember, this woman was Samson's wife. She manipulated him. She was used to get the answer to the riddle out of him. Or his own wife was used against him. Now, Samson faces the same thing again. So Samson went to Gaza, chapter 16, and saw there a harlot, a prostitute, and went in unto her. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson has come hither, and they can pass him in and lay wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it's day, we shall kill him. We don't know how they plan to do that, because if one man can kill a thousand men, I don't know what they had planned to do to him. But Verse 3, And Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of a hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorak, whose name was Delilah. So, uh, verse 5, And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her, they came to Delilah, and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lies, by what means we shall prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. So the Philistines, the lords of the Philistines, came to this new woman that he was in love with in the valley of Sorek, Delilah, who's also, she's also a Philistine again, and they said, find out, why Samson is so strong, and every one of us, every one of the lords of the Philistines will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. Verse 6, Delilah allows herself to be used to entice and manipulate Samson and tell him where his strength lies. Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lies, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. She even knew what they wanted to do. They didn't just want to bind him. They wanted to afflict him. They wanted to cause him pain and torture him. She knew what they was going to do. Verse 7, because he's their enemy. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green roofs that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green roofs which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now they were lying Men, in, men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber, and said unto, she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the wheels as a bread of toe is broken when it's touched the fire. So his strength was not known. Verse 10, And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Verse 12, And Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were men lying in wait abiding in the chamber. And he brake them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head, with the web. And she fastened it with the pen and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep and went away with the pen of the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lie. 
she's trying to, uh, you know, make him feel sorry for her. She's having a pity party kind of, trying to get, trying to make Samson feel sorry for her, manipulate him into telling her where his strength is. Verse 16, and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words. She didn't just manip manipulate him uh, and pressure him once, but day after day after day and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Verse 17 says then uh, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, there has not come a razor upon my head. I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he did not know that the Lord had was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and they put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Look, he allowed himself to be manipulated, enticed and manipulated, and coerced and blackmailed by his wife, uh, by this woman that he's with, Delilah, and reveals his secret to her, his strength, and the Philistines bound him, cut out his eyes, and bound him with fetters, and he did grind in the prison house in verse 21. How many people out there today has allowed the enemy to manipulate you? You've been manipulated. You've been enticed, manipulated by the enemy. You've been spiritually blackmailed by the enemy and coerced by the enemy. And he's pressed you daily till you finally gave in. And now spiritually, you're bound. Like Samson was with fetters of brass. Spiritually, you're bound in chains of darkness. And they put out his eyes. And a lot of people today are spiritually blind, and they're bound uh, by sin, and bound by the devil, because they allow themselves to be manipulated in, into uh, into doing things against uh, their will, into doing things against God's will, things they knew, which wasn't right, maybe into committing adultery, or committing fornication, maybe into lying, or stealing, or whatever it may be. You allow the enemy to suppress you Pressed and pressed you until you gave in and manipulated you. Uh, he told you if you don't do this, this is what will happen. And you gave in to the enemy. But today you're spiritually blinded and, you, and you're bound and you feel like you can't. Uh, you, you, you're uh, no wonder so many people like Samson, all his strength went from him. Today so many people, spiritually they're weak. And they're feeble, and their spiritual strength is gone from them because they've been manipulated, deceived, and manipulated, and blackmailed and coerced by the enemy into doing things against their own will and against the will of God and against the word of God. And today, oh, the condition they're in. Look at Samson, this great man of God. His eyes are cut out. He's in enemy territory, bound with fetters of brass and grinding in the prison house. How about you today? Do you feel like you're spiritually blind, spiritually weak? Do you feel like you're bound and you can't get loose? Have you allowed the enemy to manipulate you and to get you to do things contrary to the uh, will of God and the word of God? Susan, you got anything right now? Oh, my. Oh, my. I so thank you very much. Let us know where you are joining us from. Share, share, share this live broadcast. Let people learn about manipulation. Share, 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 share. Let us know where you are joining us from. My name is Susan. Michael and I, we are here. 
I see so many people, they call black and white couple, yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Lord has been gracious to, to us. And if the Lord has been gracious to us, even you, we wish you all the best. Whenever you are, if you are dating, if you're in marriage, we wish you all the best. We wish you all the best. It works. It is working. Not by, not by manipulation, no, by, by the spirit of our Jehovah. Jesus, we love you. Amen. So, so many different ways you can be manipulated. Uh, there was this man one time, uh, you know, uh, he was uh, asking someone, asking someone to pray for them about a uh, certain court case they were facing. And, uh, you know, they didn't want, they wanted the Lord to move for them and so that the charges would be dropped and they wouldn't go to jail, they wouldn't go to prison. And this individual told them uh, that they was asking to pray for them and remi uh, remember my court day. And this other person uh, who happened to be a minister uh, or a pastor or prophet, whatever it was, said, uh, uh, you know, the Lord said, uh, give this amount of money and you won't go to jail. Now, <laughs> what a way to manipulate somebody into giving money to uh, a church or a ministry or, or to get money out of somebody. I mean, if you need, if you, if you need, if you need uh, money, don't manipulate somebody. Just uh, be honest and tell them, I need help. You know, I need uh, this much money for rent or food for my children or, or uh, I'm having a hard time and uh, can you help me? Don't allow the devil to use you and manipulate people, especially uh, when they're asking you, uh, mm, how do I say, sometimes when people's in a bad predicament and they're needing prayer or they need the Lord to move for them, uh, sometimes other people can take advantage of that. Sure, I'll pray for you if you do this or do that, or sure, I'll help you if you do this or, or if you do that or if you agree to this. Now, as a child of God, the Bible tells us to pray for one for another, that uh, uh, pray for one for another and let our requests be made known to one another that we may be healed. And it tells us to pray for one another and bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We're not supposed to have to pay people to pray for us, pay people to prophesy to us, or allow somebody to, uh, in our time of trouble, allow someone to manipulate you and they're getting something out of you for their own personal gain, their own selfish reasons, for their own advantage. That's manipulation. It's the spirit of witchcraft. Uh, don't fall for it. Don't let them manipulate you. And let's pray that they repent. And and uh, and don't allow the devil to use them to manipulate people. You uh, don't allow anyone to manipulate you. You know. Jesus never manipulated anyone. Jesus never looked at uh, blind Bartimaeus or the woman with the issue of blood and said, sure, I'll pray for you if you do this or do that. You, uh, you know, you give me uh, 500 shillings and I'll pray for you. I'll give you back your sight. He just said, go, your faith has made you whole. You know, he, 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 he touched them. He, prayed, he, he, he said the words and they were made whole. He gave them what they needed. He didn't try to manipulate people. And we're supposed to be Christ-like. God's children don't go around manipulating people, but the children of the enemy, the children of the devil do because the, uh, the devil's always trying to get us to do things contrary to God's will, God's word, and even our own will. You know, uh, we know that we're supposed to be faithful to our husband or wife. Lady, you know you're supposed to be faithful to that husband, and that wife, husband's supposed to be faithful to that wife. And the devil tries to, uh, you know, someone tries to come along and manipulate you and say, mm, if you'll do this, you know, if you'll come and be with me, uh, I'll give you this or that, you know. I can give you such a nice home. I can give you nice clothes, a nice place, a, a, a nice car. 
uh, I can t I can I can take care of you better than uh, this other person can. Amen. <laughs> So, don't allow anyone to manipulate you. Susan's smiling because I got on my WhatsApp status. Uh, you know, I love you forever, Susan, and I can't wait to marry you and all those things. <laughs> now, you shouldn't be manipulating each other. You should be telling each other how much you love each other and appreciate each other and how much, uh, how wonderful they are. That's all you have to do. Lady, that's all you have to do to get what you want. Just tell that man how much you love him and appreciate him and how handsome he is and uh, what a good husband he is and what a good provider he is. And Oh, you'll get anything. You can get almost anything you want. I guess that could be manipulation if you, if you didn't mean it. But if that man's really doing those things, you probably mean it. But if he's, allows, if he's a lousy husband and if he's not paying the bills and taking care of you and he, He's mistreating you, and you tell him that, then I don't know. You must be manipulating him or something if it's not true. But oh, I hope, I hope in my case it's true. But uh, that uh, that I show Susan enough love. But yeah, we'll make sure of that. But anyway, don't allow the devil to manipulate you through other people, and don't be used to manipulate other people yourself. You know. Uh, you see, uh, if you know something on someone, you know a secret about someone, and you tell them, I'm going to reveal this about you to your husband or wife or, or to the church or, or to the pastor or, or to the, my, the boss or whoever it is. If you don't do this or that, I'm going to tell on you. That's blackmail. That's manipulation. Don't manipulate the people. Just tell them to repent and get right with God, and keep and uh, and stop doing what they're doing. Don't try to take advantage of people. Don't try to manipulate people. Don't try to coerce people into getting things, uh, do things for your own personal gain and advantage. You can't force that man or woman to stay with you if they don't want you. If you manip manipulate them and coerce them. And to being in a relationship with you and marrying you, you're just going to be miserable in the long run. If they don't love you, if you're forcing them to be with you, uh, if you're going to the witch or to the witch doctor or to the sorcerer or to the wizard or, or having voodoo done or trying to cast some curse or some spell to get that man or a woman, you may get them, but you'll also be miserable. You might be able to make them stay with you. Maybe that, that you can't make them love you just because you manipulated them into doing what you wanted them to do doesn't mean uh, uh, that they love you. And if they don't love you, then what good is it? Just just pray to God and, and uh, ask God to give you someone to love and someone that loves you and whatever it is you're dealing with in whatever area of life. To stay in the will of God, in the word of God, let the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit lead you, pray and seek the Lord. Don't let the devil manipulate you through anyone, and don't let the devil use you to manipulate anyone else. Susan. Wow. <laughs> what about that? We have nothing else to add. It's just telling everybody that have been watching, God bless you. God increase us. You can follow us on our page, at Kids page. We usually have come live on Facebook. And very soon we shall link it to the YouTube. I know God is going to bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you, Lord, dear God, to set everyone to listening today free from the spirit of manipulation set them free from the spirit of blackmail and coercion and witchcraft in jesus name dear god we break every curse every hex every spell lord every form of witchcraft we destroy it in the name of jesus christ we plead the blood of jesus christ dear god lord heavenly father help us not to be used to manipulate people and to 
uh, uh, try to get people to do things against your will and against their own free will. Lord Jesus, we ask you to save the lost, heal the sick. We ask you to strengthen people, encourage people in Jesus' name. Lord, please, God, save everyone under the sound of our voice. Meet every need. God, if they need a job, give them a job. If they need financial blessing, please bless their finances to pay their bills and take care of their families. If they need a healing in their body, may they be healed in the name of Jesus. If they need to be filled with your spirit, fill them, dear Jesus. Jesus, please teach us your word. Lord, fill us with your spirit. Wash us in your blood. In Jesus' name. Amen. We love you all. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you for joining in. Susan's email for the ladies. Warrior Prayer 413 at gmail.com. Gentlemen, my email is Mike Atkins 355 at gmail.com. We love you. Uh, we love each other. We love you. We love Jesus. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you. Remember, follow us. Uh, like Atkins Ministry, follow us on Atkins Ministry. You'll receive an update every time we go live. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Atkins Ministry. Uh, our email's there. We also have an online radio station we're trying to get going, uh, which will be 24 hours a day, seven days a week, international. You can listen to online, which will have preaching, teaching, and music, and maybe prayers and other things, maybe even testimonies. We'll see. As soon as we get that, make sure that's working correctly and good. Susan can share it to Atkins Ministry, to Facebook, and you can listen in. We want to fill it with uh, lots of good biblical anointed content to help people and to see souls saved in Jesus' name. If you want to help us with the comforters, you can go to PayPal, uh, MikeAtkins355 at gmail.com. Look for that email. Donate $5, $10 or uh, 500 shillings in Kenya, or uh, 1,000 shillings. Whatever you want to donate, whatever you feel led, we're not going to manipulate you or try to persuade you what to do. Give uh, has given unto the Lord, and the Lord will bless you. The widows need your help. The orphans need your help. The homeless need your help. And we, we also, besides the comforters, we just want to win souls and see souls saved. We're on radio in the United States. We're creating the online radio station. We're live on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Susan's a sharing the radio station. You see in the comments? Comments. Look at the comments, everyone. Click on that. That'll take you to the online radio station. Don't panic. We're, it's new. It's only about a little over a week old. We're adding content. These messages on Facebook will be shared there. Music. Other teaching and preaching. If you have a prayer request, a comment, uh, email us, contact, contact us even here in the comments. Uh, while we wish we could help everyone uh, as a ministry, we're trying to win souls and help the widows and the sometimes, sometimes the orphans and the homeless. And, uh, but uh, we, can't, we can't help everyone in every area of life but we can surely pray for you we can pray for your needs and join you in prayer and ask the lord to meet your needs and uh, other believers here can see your needs if you want to share them and we can all help pray with you and i assure you that if you'll uh, bless the work of god and and help the widows and the orphans and the homeless and help spread the gospel to a lost and dying world and help us to win souls that jesus will bless you your home your family, your finances, uh, your churches, your ministries, the Lord will bless you, bless you, bless you, and until you're overflowing. And you'll have so much you won't know what to do with it because you is a blessing to the kingdom of God and because you remember the poor. In the name of Jesus, until we meet again, we love you. 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 In Jesus' name, <laughs> amen. We're showing our engagement rings. We love you. Love you, Susan. Till we meet again, Lord bless you each and every one. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.